welcome to my series of videos of all my automotive projects. This is my 1984 Lincoln Town Car Base, which was a gracious gift to me for no cost whatsoever to me by my grandmother. She had it parked in the barn for 20 years, and last year, right around Thanksgiving, which was 2015 by the way, I went down to the barn, pulled it out, and since then I've not only gotten it running, driving, registered, tagged, and inspected, I've also converted it to a hybrid supercapacitor system. And I'll explain how that works in just a second. Now if we move over here to the engine bay, we'll see that this is the standard equipment 302 5 liter Ford motor that you could get the only motor you could get in 1984 for the Lincoln Town Car and for those of you that don't know this Lincoln Town Car is actually a fairly close relative of the Ford Crown Vic and in the Crown Vic you could get the 351 which they were smart putting the 351 in the Crown Vic because I tell you this car is slow it is slow but can't do anything about that that was Ford's design I improved on their design by making like I said a hybrid system out of it so to begin with the hybrid system is controlled by although it's messy these three relays down in the bottom here this one relay and this switch this is a vacuum switch it tells the system when the engines running based on vacuum this is the oil pressure relay it tells the end the system as well when the engines running so you got two backups there to tell the system when it, the engine is running those three relays three relays down in there control the ignition and the starter for when you're stopping and starting and the relay which you probably can't see but it's down in there that relay is the main power relay for the system so you turn the key and that clicks on the super capacitor you might think battery compartment. Oh, well, no, we got an AGM 55 amp hour up here in the battery compartment. This battery is big enough to run accessories, lights, etc, etc. The main function of this battery is to help supply power to the super capacitor when it's just started the motor up and it needs to recharge quickly. And that's supplemented by the new non-original alternator. It's important to have an alternator to charge up the system because you're not going anywhere without a good alternator. And Speaking of good equipment, this vehicle has a aftermarket starter which can handle the starting and stopping loads required by the hybrid system. If we move around here to the trunk, we'll find the supercapacitor system. In the trunk, the trunk's messy because I've been working on some stuff and using it as a storage bin for a little while but this is the heart of the system 2200 amp hours of cranking amps it's amp hour 2200 cranking amps amp hours really low super capacitors and capacitors in general have really low amp hours but they can supply huge amounts of current for just a few seconds which is what you need when you're cranking up a motor so these are six 2600 farad Maxwell supercapacitors wired in series and you can get these pre-made on the internet if you would like to do this conversion yourself if you like to do the conversion yourself you'll find a link in the description of where you can get a complete wiring diagram for this system and feel free to improve upon it as well this big relay here is the aftermarket starting relay it's a contactor out of an electric vehicle you might find it in a souped up golf cart or something but I use it as a starting relay have higher start cycle times so we need a heavy-duty relay that can take that power the original relay I tried using it yeah just wouldn't cut it it's the original relays maybe could take two starts every hour they were just horrible so to wire it all up we use this two gauge electric car wire that I used in my electric truck which you'll see later in the series and that wire goes underneath through the frame rail, frame rails and up to the starter and then there's some charge wires they come from the alternator and battery and that kind of thing now there's a few relays 
hidden back down in the corner here. That's the reason this is out, because I've been working on it. Hidden back down in the corner there. You probably won't be able to see them, but they're down in there. And they're connected to the brake lights. And those, it connects to the brake lights and tells the system when you're pressing the brakes. But if you've ever looked at your brake lights when somebody's pressing the brake and then they turn on the indicator, one of the lights, of course, starts to flash. So then the system doesn't know if you're pressing the brake or not, but it's an intelligent system. It detects when you put the indicator on and switches its input to the other light so that when your foot's on the brake, so you put on the left, it switches its input to the right light and knows that your foot's still on the brake. When your foot's on the brake, it sends the signal to the relays up front and kills the engine. When you let off that brake, this, these relays detect that your foot's off the brake, send the signal, the start signal, and those relays up there work with the oil pressure and vacuum sw switches and relays, and that thing fires right up. You can take off, you can go as fast as you want, engine runs great like a gas car until you hit the brake again, and then you coast in silently, dies, foot off the brake, starts up again. This is known as a micro hybrid system. I call it a hybrid system because it's a good system for this vehicle, but if you want to call it a, a micro hybrid system, that's what most people call it. Thanks for joining me today. I do appreciate it and I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, check the description for the wiring diagram if you want to do this conversion yourself. It was really easy to do and I encourage you to just take a look.